Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition here of the Washington Football Maniacs channel. I am Greg, and nice to meet you here. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. I try to come out with videos as frequently as I possibly can. Um, I have been off of my schedule quite a bit for the last few weeks. Uh, the reason why is um, I have had my wife who has had surgery, so I've had to take care of her. And uh, because of that, um, I have not been able to put out videos on a regular basis. So that's my excuse, okay? Uh, I think that's a pretty good excuse. Uh, so anyway, um, please bear with me. I know the uh, algorithm here <laughs> at uh, YouTube has not been so kind uh, with me, and they don't take any excuses whatsoever. I understand that because uh, my uh, viewership has certainly uh, dropped off uh, dramatically but you know that's that's the way it goes we will we will definitely get it back uh, but anyway uh, I wanted to put this video out uh, because I want to talk about don't want to talk about Dan Snyder I don't want to talk about any of that stuff I actually want to talk about uh, what type of season do I think that uh, the Washington commanders are going to have and you know, when we break it down, we look at the talent that we have brought in uh, to this team so far. You know, barring any type of major injuries that's going to happen, we're going to have injuries. I mean, it's it's just unavoidable, right? Uh, but barring anything like that, um, when you look at who's on the roster right now, and, and of course the cream of the crop is going to rise to the top, and, you know, you're not going to see everybody, obviously. But at the end of the day, at the end of the training camp, when you see your, was it 53-man roster, uh, you're going to see a very talented group of individuals on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball. I think the only thing that might be a question mark right now is going to be how that offensive line is going to be. And, you know, we lost some talent there, but we also picked up some talent as well. So, um, but that is still going to be a little bit of a question mark. Um, however, our our offensive line coach last year did a great job. So, you know, I'm not too worried. However, that is going to be probably one of the question marks we're going to have. Um, I think our defense last year certainly got humbled because they didn't really play well together. And uh, I think this year they're going to play better as a unit. And if they can play better as a unit, that means overall uh, this team, this defense is going to really excel. And hopefully uh, we're going to see shades of what they did in 2020. Overall, though, you're looking at the talent and you're looking at how some of these guys have worked really hard in OTAs. I know you can't put a lot of emphasis on OTAs, but you can also look at individual, um, you know, efforts, and you can just you can just look and see these guys have improved a whole lot, and they are really fighting to improve from their rookie seasons, from their maybe their second year and stuff like that to try to take the next step, and I think because of that, you're going to overall you're going to see a much improved team this year. Having said that, I think that easily you can see this team have a 10-win season. Um, they have one of the easiest schedules in the league. We all know this. Uh, I think they're actually tied with the Cowboys as having the easiest um, schedule in the league. Of course, of course, it had to be the Cowboys that also had to have the easiest schedule, right? So, you know... The ball is in their court, basically. Um, you know, they have everything they need. Yes, there's going to be outside distractions with this franchise, but guess what? What else is new? There, there are always going to be outside distractions with this franchise. It's just something that you're going to have to really honestly deal with. You know, if you're going to be a Washington Commanders coach, player, owner, you know, what, <laughs> um, fan, I mean, you know, you're, there are always going to be some sort of distractions with this team. And so I really feel like overall, though, that's something you just have to learn to live with. I think Ron Rivera also, the reason why I think that this team is going to um, excel is that there's a lot of pressure on Ron Rivera to excel. There's a lot of pressure on Jack Del Rio because he's put a lot of that on himself with you know things they said in the media, whether you agree or disagree. 
he's put a lot of pressure on himself. So right now, you know, folks are looking at him like, you know, you know, there, there's a lot of people who don't like him politically, and so they would love to see him fired. Well, you know, if Jack Del Rio comes out and he has his defense playing like a number one defense in the league, then those people who don't like him politically will kind of let this slide. And, um, you know, because when it comes down to football, people tend to forget about that stuff, right? So, um, I know I do. I, I could care less about your political affiliation, what you believe. You know, when it comes down to the football stuff, hey, you know, let's all get along, right? So, I really feel like there's a lot of pressure on Jack Del Rio, but there's definitely a lot of pressure on Ron Rivera to excel this year. This is year three. This is make or break. And if this team does not make the playoffs this year, and on top of that, if they don't win a playoff game this year, then Ron Rivera's job is in trouble. I really believe it. Now, he may not lose his job after year three, but he is definitely going to be on the hot seat come year four. And... So he's going to have to make sure that this team starts excelling. And then from there on, it's not just, okay, we made the playoffs and we won a playoff game in year three, so does that appease you enough? No. They're going to have to continue to excel and move forward even from there. This team needs to become a perennial winner year in and year out for fans and everybody else to really start uh, trusting them, to really start respecting this franchise and to really start believing that this franchise can be a Super Bowl contender at some point. Because right now, nobody believes that. I think the only people who actually believe that are the ones who are wearing the uniforms right now. And sometimes you, you start to wonder, do those people even believe it? And I think they do honestly have the right guy coaching that will make them believe that. But he's going to have to prove it as well. And so this is a make-or-break year for the Washington Commanders. Make or break year year for Ron Rivera for a lot of these guys. So you know they got their guys in place right now. The rubber is meeting the road at this point. You know we've got one month until we really start digging into OT uh, not OTAs but uh, training camp, and we really uh, start to see what's going to happen this year. So I'm excited. I really predicting though this team is going to be at least a 9 or 10 win team this year, but they have got to make the playoffs. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think this is too optimistic? Um, I think it's a little too optimistic to wish for any more wins than that, but we'll see. Uh, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, please, honestly, give at least give this video a like, interact somewhat, somewhat, share this video, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel. I'm going to try to breathe some new life into this channel and get some videos cranked out for you. Um, my wife is improving. Um, I'm hopefully getting a little bit more time back into investing into this channel. I know I've been gone for a little bit, and my channel has quite frankly suffered and so I'm trying to keep it um, on life support and eventually take it off life support to where it's breathing on its own again so just bear with me and that being said hell to the Washington Commanders let's go maniacs